Hey guys, welcome back to BT InfoSec. My name is BT and I'm going to be taking you through my series of video for the detection lab for creation of your home lab. Um, if you check my previous video, I, I, I put a walkthrough video of how you can install the detection lab step by step. Um, this is a diagram of how the detection lab looks like. Um, this is um, the detection lab consists of four virtual machines, which there's a logger, there's DC, there's WEF, there's Windows 10. If you check out my previous video, this detection lab was created by Chris Long, and um, this is a lab where for those who are getting into cybersecurity and you want to learn, have some skills for free, it's pretty much easy to deploy. Um, all the tools that are deployed here are deployed for free and some of them are on trial and they might have the um, expiry date, but um, you can always just bring down the lab and reinstall it again. If you check my previous video, I put, I put a, um, the step-by-step -step of how you can install this and how you can destroy it if you want to destroy it. So for today's video, I'm just going to be taking you through the step-by-step -step of what a detection lab is all about you know this is the introduction it shows all the all every all the all the platform you can install the detection lab on um, there's the primary lab features you can go through this on your own this is the uh, network diagram of how the detection lab looks like and all the tools that are installed and going down there are the prerequisites and things that you need to learn but for today's video i'm just going to be taking you through the usage of what detection lab is all about um, a lot of people definitely want to learn, okay, what can I do with this lab? Now I've installed it on my, on my virtual machine. What can I do with this lab? Um, this lab can also be installed on several virtual machines. You can install it on ESXi. You can install this on VirtualBox. Um, for the video I created, I installed it on VMware. So if you have uh, the paid version of VMware, you can always um, install this on your virtual machine. You can also try it on VirtualBox. I haven't tried it on VirtualBox, but um, I'm sure you can run on VirtualBox also. So for this video, uh, the usage, this is Atomic Red Team. Um, if you, you can go to Atomic Red Team, Atomic Red Team is pretty fun. Um, the detection lab already has Atomic Red Team already pre-installed in it. And um, if you want to configure this um, on your own, you can just install the Red Team.ps1 and you can invoke Atomic Red Team Execution Framework. Um, it also has auto runs to win event log. So if you have, if you have the detection lab already has this um, running, so if you take a look at this, you know you can run this command in um, in Splunk to show you what exactly um, all the logs that are being collected using this. And it says the purpose of this log all the uh, this log all the items enumerated by sys internals auto runs to the Windows event log for easy analysis and searching. So I. I'm just going to um, take you through only one of these tools today. And the tool I want to touch upon today on this video quickly is um, the tool called Bad Blood. So Bad Blood is a tool where um, it fills an Active Directory domain with, uh, with thousands of objects such as users, computers, organization units, etc. Um, the purpose of this is, you know, it allows um, the user to quickly populate a domain without having to manually add users, computers, etc. So now, without further ado, I'm just going to jump into my um, my virtual machine. So this is my virtual machine where all my uh, my detection lab is installed. This is my DC. So I'm going to log into my DC right now. My user is Vagrant. I'm good. the password is also Vagrant. If you check the detection lab's website, all the credentials are right there for you to check. I have the WEF here. I have the Windows 10 also running. And this is my logger. The logger is where Splunk is installed. So if you just go to the website, um, Splunk, web, um, to the IP address, you will be able to access Splunk. So the IP address here says 192.168.56.105. Uh, most of these labs use a static IP. So it's exactly the IP address you have online that you're going to use to access this. So while our Splunk is still coming up, I'm just going to show you where Bad Blood is installed, where Bad Blood is on the domain controller. So if you come over to, um, if you go over to, so if you go over to the file folders, you come over to this PC, and when you come over to this PC, 
you go over to Windows 2016 Drive C and you go over to Tools, which is right here. So there are multiple tools that are already pre-installed in the detection lab. So we have Atomic Red Team, we have Bad Blood, we have Mimikat, we have PowerSploit, we have Purple Sharp, we have Sys Internals. These are pretty cool tools that you can play with. You know, at this point, you don't care if it breaks the, um, the, the lab because, you know, you're learning. So um, you have something you can always play with. And um, you shouldn't try this on a production network anyways. But when you want to play with um, something really nice, you can imitate a real production network. So let's open Bad Blood here. So we go to Bad Blood Master now and see we have bad blood here so if we go over to the detection lab website which is right here so if what we need to do right here is all we need to do is just to invoke bad blood if you go to the external link there's a github which I already opened right here so bad blood has its own um, github page you know for those of you that don't have detection lab and you still want to play with bad blood all you need to do is you all you need to do is to clone the git repo so if you clone this repo from bad blood's um, github so let's just go see what the command is so we come down here it says from this this is what we're gonna get so and this is what you're gonna see and you can see that it's gonna have all this for you so when you just you could just clone the repo you know git clone this you know and you all you need to do is run the invoke bad ps1 so Let's go over to our virtual machine first. So first and foremost, you know, let's open Active Directory and let's see what we have first in our Active Directory. Okay, so this is our Active Directory. Our Active Directory here shows win domain or local. So these are the users that are installed in our Active Directory. So these are users. This is the default users that we have. These are the workstations. This is the Windows 10 as our workstations. You see these are domain controllers, DC. And do we have any computers? No. Servers. WEF is the server here. Okay, so now we see what we have right here. So going over to our up to the bad blood website. So there's a disclaimer here. It says, please note, all two scripts in this report are released for use as is, without any warranties of any kind, including but not limited to their installation, use, or performance. So they're trying to tell you, you know, like this particular tool, do not try it in production environment. Only use this for a lab. So moving back to here, let's open our PowerShell, our PowerShell um, terminal. So you have to run PowerShell in... Um, you have to run PowerShell in administrative mode. So you right click and you click run as administrator. So let's come back here. So this is where our invoke bad blood PS one is. So we have to accept to run as administrator for PowerShell first. So our PowerShell terminal is up right now. It's coming up right now. So the next thing we want to do is we want to come over here copy because you know we have to run it from here so it's just easier to copy the file path and um, go over here and you go to cd to this and you click enter it takes you all the way down there and we click there it lists all our directories so the next thing we want to do is let's go over back to this and let's see what exactly we're told so it says all you need to do is run this script invoke bad blood ps1 so we can just go back here and we can just say invoke so you want to make sure you put this first the execution it says invoke bad blood ps1 and you place and you click on enter it says, welcome to Bad Blood. Press any key to continue. You click continue. It says, the first tool that absolutely mocks up your test domain. This tool is never meant for production and can only totally screw up your domain. Press enter to continue. Press enter. 
So you are responsible for how you use this tool. It is intended for personal use only. This is to not intended for commercial use. Press enter to continue. And now it says domain size generated via parameters. Users is 2,500. So it's going to create 2,500 users for us like randomly. And it has going to, um, the groups too is 500 um, groups and it's going to create 100 computers. So this is going to be imitate a real production network. That's the aim here because if you see our, our DC here, our Active Directory here, you can see that our uh, our domain here just have few users. We can create users ourselves if we want, you know, but if you want to play with something really fast and you don't want to go through the step by step of doing this and you want to imitate a real production network, you can just say it's used bad blood. It says type bad blood to deploy some randomness in your domain. So what we need to do is to type bad blood and we click enter. And immediately you click enter and that's it starts. This is loading Active Directory module for Windows PowerShell with default drive AD. Everything is going to be done and the randomness is going to start immediately. So it says random stuff into a domain progress. It's going to start if you go to your act to your to your to your active directory. Let's click let's click um refresh. Okay, it's still coming up and you know ignore this um errors here these errors are bound to happen because it's a partial script you know but it says creating tired ou structure you know it's going to start creating a lot of structures for you if you come here and you click refresh let's see what we're seeing so it's going to start creating organization units so this is going to take some time, you know, it's going to take some time. It's going to keep running all the random stuff, you know, it's just creating users on domain. Okay, so I'm just going to wait. I'm going to pause this video and let's see, you know, it's still loading. Let's see how this is going to come up when it's done. Okay, so now that we run all our bad blood, you can see that you could, you're going to get some errors like this, but, you know, the, the script is going to keep running. You can see right here, it says created tiered OU structure, creating users on domain, creating groups on domain, creating computers on domain. So all you need to do is just, um, I recommend just closing your Active Directory and go open it again. Um, just because sometimes if you use the refresh, the refresh may not work. So we're just going to open our Active Directory users and computers again. And after opening this, now you can see our new domain. So the win domain or local right now, we already have um, seek, um, seekframe.com, see the users created, created administrators. We have a lot of administrators now. Um, we have, these are the built-in administrators. Now we have more computers. Okay, no, they're not computers here, but let's go to domain controllers. Now we have more domain controllers now. No, just one it was one DC, but we have users added to the domain controllers folder. Okay, let's take a look at the next. Let's look at group, the grouper groups. You can see all the users here. Now we have testing group here. We have a computer here. We have tier one. Um, we have AWS, Azure, you know, different folders. So this is pretty cool, you know, like this kind of imitates a real production network just so you can play with it. And, I'm, and you can log into any of these users in. On your detection lab, you can always log into your any of these users on your Windows 10. Um, so the only thing I'll just let you know, this is going to take like um, up to 30 to one and a half hours because it takes some time for the script to run, create all these users. And um, you can as well, now it's done, you know, you can as well close your terminal or minimize it. And now you can start having fun. So one thing I'm just going to let you guys know is uh, this is always this is going to be really, um, it's going to really take a lot of your Splunk license. So when you're done running this script, your Splunk license may get to the quarter for the 24 hours. You know, for 24 hours, you have to, you have, you're allowed to use only, uh, I think, 500 MB. So let's log into Splunk. Say admin, change me, use the password. And now Splunk is loaded. If you come over to settings, you go over to licensing. 
Okay, so if you go over to licensing right now, you can see the license daily usage. We have only 500 MB. That's what we can use in 24 hours. And um, right now, if you see what we've used, I haven't even, this is my first time logging into Splunk and since when I started this lab. And since volume used today is 584, 585 MB. So this really takes a toll on your Splunk license. So if you want to run this, you know, and you want to play with this, just make sure you wait till the next 24 hours before you can use, um, you can start playing with this for detection because bad blood, you know, it, 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 it deploys all those users and groups and it takes a lot of, a lot of logs. So if you also come down to the Splunk um, dashboards here, so if you come to this, to the, um, home page and you scroll down let's keep scrolling down yeah you can see the license usage usage is coming up waiting for queued jobs to start so let's just wait and it's going to come up right now now you can see all the other dashboards are still coming up but our splunk dashboard is, has come up right now so this is license usage usage so this is the quarter you're allowed and this is what we've used so you can see this is what we've used. And I'm also going to be taking you guys through another video. Um, our, our Splunk has PowerShell login enabled. So this is a PowerShell event. And look at all the script that Bad Blood ran, you know. See, this is all the script. Our PowerShell login was able to detect this, you know. See, it's, it was able to detect everything that was run on PowerShell. So I'm going to be creating another video on um, how you guys are going to make use of um, the detection for the PowerShell login. So we're going to play with some things on the on our DC and we're going to see how Splunk is going to be able to detect everything. But if you see this right there after you're done installing your um, running your bad blood, you can see everything, all the users that were created. See, see all the users that are created, all the errors and everything for the script that was run using bad blood, our PowerShell login. I uh, was able to detect this. So thank you for joining me today. If you have any question, you know, you could just post it in the comment section. And this is one of the videos from the series of um, creating um, the detection lab and how you can use the detection lab. Please subscribe. If you have um, any comment, you can always share this with your friends and families, you know, and join me with my next video on the series for using the detection lab. Have a nice day. Bye.